ECDC On Air. The podcast of the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. Keeping up to date with European epidemiology. Hello, my name is Nicholas and I'm your host for today's episode of ECDC On Air, which is the podcast for the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control. ECDC has a new mandate, which includes the creation of a new EU health task force, which provides effective operational response and crisis preparedness support on the ground and uh, also remotely. Today with me in the studio, I have Orla Condell, expert in emergency preparedness and response, and uh, she's here to talk about this new European Union Health Task Force. So I think before we begin, could you just tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to ECDC? Sure. So by background, I'm a microbiologist. I was working in research and then moved to public health back in 2013 when I did the UFM fellowship. So this is the ECDC fellowship program where I was based in Denmark. Um, after the fellowship, I moved to WHO, where I worked um, from 2015 up until just before starting at ECDC, and I was working at country office level. I worked in three different countries, so first in Liberia and West Africa in response to the Ebola outbreak, and then I moved to the Western Pacific, and I was working in Cambodia short term following the Zika crisis, and then spent the most of my time, um, so just over four years, in the Vietnam country office. I moved to ECDC in October, uh, not last year, the year before, in 2021, and I've been working uh, mostly on health task force since arriving here. Could we then hear from you a little bit, what is really this EU health task force? So basically, the background to setting up The new EU Health Task Force was throughout the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, There was demonstrated shortcomings in EU mechanisms for managing um, health threats. And that included essentially a lack of readily available human resources that could be deployed in a timely manner, um, as well as the need for stronger capacity for both preparedness and response um, in general. Uh, One of the main shortcomings was a lack of a rapid mechanism to move Um, EU experts between member states. So for a way to not only bring rapid support, but also for countries to learn from each other, to share their expertise, to share their experiences, to share their good practices. So the EU Health Task Force is essentially set up to be an EU deployable workforce because we saw that the impact and the need that this would have um, from the COVID-19 pandemic. How does it fit with the new ECDC mandate? Basically, the new mandate establishes the Health Task Force with the aim um, of providing as you said, uh, operational response and crisis preparedness support. So to EU countries, but as well as globally. This is a component essentially uh, for a stronger ECDC that should uh, reinforce ECDC's role to provide direct country support. So that's by mobilizing and deploying experts to support local responses, as well as preparedness on the ground, as well as ECDC contributing to um, international response teams. Following the new mandate, the Health Task Force is being established and coordinated by ECDC. But there will be, from the start, we want a clear view on the involvement of member state experts. So the member state experts in the operation of the Health Task Force um, once it's established. In more practical terms, what does it look like? So you send a team on the ground. Uh, What's the composition normally of such a team? Basically, we want the health task force to be flexible. And how we will actually respond will depend on the actual requests we come from countries. So first of all, the health task force will respond to specific requests, um, and they will be related to communicable diseases or those of unknown origin. The requests can come from countries, but also maybe from the Commission um, or from other international partners, such as GORN and WHO. As far as the teams, we will establish a team that's actually based on the request so that it actually matches the needs. To give practical examples, we will support for emergency response during outbreaks and crisis days. So this could be outbreak investigation. It could be rapid identification of gaps, such as preparedness gaps. It could be providing very specific support, so such as expert advice, guidance, protocols, operational research. Again, it depends on the specific needs. And it can also be as related to preparedness, such as supporting and updating preparedness plans and doing preparedness assessments, simulation exercises, after action reviews. So there's kind of a diverse, let's say, menu of activities that we can support. And how we support will really be based on the individual request that comes in. Okay. 
And uh, what's the kind of added value of having such a mobile team? So we will provide support in two ways, either remotely or on the ground. If it's remote, we can provide support from Stockholm, whereas we also want the possibility of deploying teams in the field, which means we can give practical on the ground support, understanding the the local context and adapting ECDC guidance essentially based on specific local context. You said it's uh, both EU countries and globally, so could they essentially be deployed to any country in the world? Yes. So as far as country support, the health task force will work globally, but we'll serve basically in order of priority, EU countries, EU candidate countries, um, potential candidate countries, neighborhood policy and worldwide. But yes, requests can come in from EU EEA member states or other countries. And how does it work, the composition of these teams? Is it just staff members from ECDC or are they being recruited externally? No, not exclusively ECDC staff members. So just to explain the kind of composition of the health task force. First, there will be kind of two main teams. One is the ECDC coordination team. So that's a team here in Stockholm. So we're now working to establish and we'll coordinate the health task force when it's operational. And then the second team we're calling the enhanced emergency capacity. That will be public health experts from basically three pools. So one is experts in ECDC across the house. Um, the second is the ECDC fellowship programs. So fellows during their two years um, in the fellowship, EPIED and UFEM fellows. And the third will actually be member state experts. So this will be, again, on a voluntary basis, experts in EU EEA member states. Uh, and when we're responding to a request, yes, there can be ECDC experts, but not exclusively. We would build a team. And one of the strengths of the health task force is indeed that it's not just focused on ECDC experts, but also on these member state experts and the the fellows. How will uh, then experts be selected to participate? Basically, once we receive and accept a request for assistance, we will assemble a team to fulfill this specific request. So the individual experts will be included to match the specific needs for for the assignment. And they will be selected based on their skills, based on experience, language, availability, and of course, um, interest in wanting to join the team. Um, We're currently building the mechanism to rapidly reach experts across the EU uh, for participation in the enhanced emergency capacity, including experts in national public health institutes, so that we can reach out and include them as rapidly as possible when when we do get a request for support. I should say that the experts for the health task force will not be paid for EU health task force work, but we will make sure that their expenses are covered. So travel, per diem, um, accommodation, and we also that their salaries would continue to be covered by their host institution. And when when deployed, ECDC will continue to provide support and will ensure the safety and security of any expert that is deployed on a mission. If anybody out there listening to this now would be interested in joining the task force, is there like an application process or? Basically, we're working now to establish this expert pool based on the advice from the member state experts, based on the wealth of experience from the member states, from the commission, from GORN. We were working on the procedures at the moment with the aim of enhanced emergency capacity, the member state pool to be operational from next year. Once we have the procedures in place, we will, of course, communicate them clearly with with our stakeholders and with the member states. You mentioned GORN. Uh, Maybe not all listeners will be familiar with that. Can you just tell us what is GORN and how is that different from the EU Health Task Force? Sure. So GORN stands for Global Outbreak Alert and Response Network. It's a global um, network of institutions and networks. I think they call it a network of networks, which is operated under WHO. It supports global health security by essentially coordinating and making technical expertise from its partners um, available. And it supports preparedness and public health emergencies. Basically, GLORN is a very well-known actor in global emergency response. So for the health task force, we feel it's very important for us to continue working with them. And we're very enthusiastic of, of being able to, to support GORN further through this initiative. So we fully recognize there are already existing mechanisms to provide emergency support globally. So such as WHO and such as GORN, we want to be very clear that we don't want to duplicate their efforts, but work closely in collaboration. We actually hope that the health task force may support other deployment mechanisms where we can help to identify ECDC or member state experts that can be deployed through their leadership. So we do want to work in partnership with them 
with other international agencies. We know that ECDC, as well as the ECDC fellows, have a long history of supporting GORN, and, and this will not change. Um, similarly, we will work with other partner EU agencies, such as ECHO. So ECHO is the European Civil Protection and Humanitarian Aid Operations. So we have been working with them, and through Health Task Force, we will continue to work with them to provide public health expertise when they respond to an emergency or a disaster. So through Health Task Force, we want to um, basically enrich these relationships and then be able to further provide public health support um, in partnership with international organizations. So actually, the way we view it at the moment is if there's a deployment request or a request for support inside of the EU, then this is something that we directly as ECDC can deploy. But if it's a, a request from outside of the EU, then we will also rely on partners where we will deploy our expertise through GORN or through ECHO. Okay, so I understand from you, I mean, this task force is being set up. Uh, there are things that need to be completed, but can you tell us what has been completed so far? What is left to do before it's fully operational? Basically, the health task force became operational with the new mandate, and we can already receive requests for support. And we are responding to requests for support from internally with experts a- across ECDC. However, as said, we've not yet um, established a way of engaging member state experts to the enhanced emergency capacity. So we're working to establish that now. Um, We're also working with the external advisory body on some other necessary elements in order to become fully operational. So the process for submitting requests for assistance to EU Health Task Force, we want to make this more standardized. At the moment, we receive requests either through email or through an email to the director. We want to make the process for submitting requests official or finalized. We're also, as said, we're working on the process to establish and mobilize expertise outside of ECDC, so for the fellows and the member states. And we're also preparing the various sort of administrative and operating procedures in relation to these. But once this has been finalized, we will be clear to communicate these out to, to our national counterparts and to, to partners. So these teams, are, are they kind of multidisciplinary? Tell us a bit more about the composition. As said, we would like for the health task force to be flexible. So there will be a range of public expertise that will be included and that we will be able to support. So this will include epidemiology, microbiology, infection prevention control, of course, emergency preparedness and response, uh, EOC, uh, risk communication. We may widen the kind of export profiles that will be available in the future. And basically, as this initiative takes shape, as we learn more about what specific requests might be coming in, but we will start with this range um, of expertise. And will there be just one team that will take on different tasks or will you have uh, several parallel teams? So we will hope to be able to have parallel teams. So basically, when a request for support will come in, we will assess. And if we uh, accept this request for support, we will assemble a team. So that team will be based to specifically address this request for support. If we have a second request for support, we will then establish a, a second team specific to the needs that are requested. So when it is fully operational, we may have several parallel assignments that we will be able to support. And have there been any requests so far? Yes, there have. So, so far this year, we've supported ECHO um, as a member of the UCPM through the Union Civil Protection Mechanism. They provided support uh, following the earthquake in Turkey and ECD deployed a, a public health expert to support in one of those teams. We also have a number of ongoing requests from EU EEA member states related to preparedness. So one for an after action review, providing technical support or advice related to simulation exercise. And one we're working on at the moment that may be related to um, uh, operational research. But actually, already last year, we responded to a number of requests for assistance. Um, Although the health task force wasn't yet established, it was helping us learn from so we can better design how the health task force um, might work. And this included uh, deployments to Poland related to the Ukraine refugee crisis. So we provided a number of experts for several rotations of this uh, UCPM team through DG Echo. We also sent staff to join the WHO uh, coordinated refugee health extension in in Krakow. This is essentially an initiative where partners could have a collaborative approach to support refugee hosting countries. I myself was deployed for one month to Krakow uh, to be based here. And there was also a number of deployments, as you well know, through GORN. 
And towards the end of last year, we also had a request for support from ECHO to provide public health support to their field office in Uganda related to the Sudan viral disease in November. And I was also deployed for for one month there, followed by a second ECDC staff. These uh, deployments that you describe is more individual staff members going to various locations and then being integrated in the structures that exist there. Once the health task force is up and running, is the idea more that the teams will operate as a unit or will it continue to be the way it is now that a certain expertise mm-hmm. is being lent out to existing structures? Basically, we're flexible and it, re- it will depend on the request. If the request is for a single expert to, to come and to be integrated into a team, then the health task force will be able to support that. For example, again, if a field office for ECHO needs a public health expert, to join their team related to a crisis and an emergency that we can provide this expert. However, if there's a a wider request for support, say, for example, a country, an EU EEA country is requesting support for an after action review, and this might require a team, in which case we'll be able to assemble a team. So that team could be experts from ECDC, other member state experts, if the requesting agency was comfortable with that. In that case, it wouldn't necessarily be one expert integrated. Rather, we would be able to send a team. So that would depend on what the needs were um, related to the request. When do we expect this to be fully operational and uh, up and running? The EU Health Task Force can already receive requests for support. But as far as the enhanced emergency capacity, we're working to establish it now. So this is ongoing and we're hoping that it will be established next year. So 2024. Okay, thank you, Orla. That was all the questions I have for today. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of ECDC On Air. For more information about ECDC and its work, please visit us on the web at ecdc.europa.eu or follow us on social media.